welcome back to the Kiltcraft podcast. My name is Vanessa. I come from West Yorkshire and I live with my little cat and my partner. This episode, I really wanted to chat with you about Pubfest. It has been a real while since I've been able to podcast due to issues changing our service provider and um, we had a good a good three weeks without internet and we also had a good month where we were setting up our um, internet and it kept getting cancelled. So we finally have it. Yay! We got the internet back the day I left for Pomfest. Um, but at least I can do this episode. <laughs> so I wanted to share, this is going to be slightly different because I wanted to share just things about Pompfest this episode and hopefully next week I may film, if I'm not busy or anything, I will film a regular episode to share my FOs and my whips because there's quite a few now. Um, they've, they've grown <laughs> over the past month or whatever it's been. Um, and then Thursday rolled round and it was time to set off for Pompfest. Bearing in mind I have been to London before, this is the first ever time I have ventured to London on my own. I have never been there before on my own. Arrived in King's Cross and made my way on the underground to get to Pomfest itself because I was meeting up with the organisers Sophie, Amy, Lydia and Megan uh, to make my way to the B&B where I was staying with the designers. I was kind of their little liaison person for the weekend so that was really nice um, and really enjoyable so I arrived after a little bit of a panic because it took me an hour to get from King King's Cross to Shadwell Station and I wasn't expecting that and they were messaging me just as I was about five minutes walk away uh, saying that the taxi would be on its way and it will be here soon and I was kind of getting my panic on but I arrived just in time for the arrival of the taxi um, so we made our way there. Um, we arrived, we relaxed for a good few hours and then I made my way with Bristol Ivy to the Loop London store which was really amazing because I've never been before. Um, ooh, I don't know. I may have put my yarn away that I bought from Loop London. It wasn't anything overly exciting but I bought some BC garn in like a, a lace weight and I think it was only about six pounds something uh, but I wanted two skeins for my jamboree top because I have a kind of emeraldy green lace weight from a long time ago and I have some coral lace weight also from a long time ago that I wanted to pair with something um, and in my head I was thinking a grey would be really perfect because it'll bring them out make them pop a little so I bought those two skeins and um, a chow goo needle as well because chow goos are really nice and I wanted them for my shawl that I was about to cast on to that day. Um, while I was there I had a good look around, saw all the beautiful lap yarns, had a good squish of quite a lot of them but I didn't want to spend my, my Pomfest money um, buying from a wool shop before Pomfest has even started so I just had a couple of little treats. Um, so that you know I didn't feel I didn't feel like I hadn't bought from there because I wanted to treat myself from there then I went upstairs in Loop London and they'd arranged out the seating area for everybody and there's quite a few knitters sat in and um, Bristol got out all of her um, well not all of them but some of her accessories from her latest book that she's going to be producing. I think it's due out in September and those designs are gorgeous. There was some shawls, a shrug which I tried on which was really beautiful. 
uh, it had I think like a lace panel down the back and the side it's like a little cocoon shrug it was really cute um, there was possibly some mittens it's hard to remember there was so much there but they were all doing gorgeous yarns and the constructions were really interesting um, so I'm really excited for that book to come out and it will be one that I will get because I saw then at Pomfest the actual samples of the garments and oh, they are gorgeous. One of them has like little welts here and pockets and it is a little bit drapey, like slouchy, not slouchy, just relaxed looking and I really want that in my life. So that is on my knit list anyway. <laughs> um, then... I sat down with a lovely Instagram friend, um, oh, can't even remember your name, that is really, really of me. So I sat down with a few, a few knitters and my friend who's carrot, uh, carrot coriander on Instagram and she brought her little baby Campbell. Um, and also met uh, Julie Asklen, Aslin, I think that's how you pronounce it, and her partner, and that was really lovely as well. Um, I just all in all had an amazing time and met some lovely people um, who I then met over the Pompest weekend as well. So it was just really nice and really exciting and it was like the best weekend ever. I then went home with food, um, well home, I went back to the B&B with Bristol and we got some food because um, I was starving and I hadn't eaten that day yet and it was around about 9pm. I think while we were at um, Loot London I managed to snag uh, two sponge cakes and there was some Pims but because I'd not eaten I didn't dare drink any because I'm quite a lightweight drinker because I don't really drink unless it's a special occasion I'm not I'm not a big drinker um, <laughs> so had some food checked in with my family so they knew that I was back safe at my B&B the following day uh, I had to head to Pomfest uh, when I arrived I then went on a little mission for the girls because they were missing something they needed and then arrived back at about quarter past ten so it was relatively at the beginning that I got there and I'm not kidding you I'm no vlogger by the way so none of this I have not got any video footage because I I don't know I'm not really into vlogging it's not something that I I like watching other people's vlogs though, I love that, but I don't think I could vlog. I don't know, I'm just not that kind of person, I think I'm a bit self-conscious to do that kind of stuff. I didn't do any video footage, I got some pictures which I have shared on Instagram of people that I've met and, and things that I've bought which I'm going to share with you in a few minutes. Um, so the first day I met up with Leah of the All You Knit Is Love podcast. Leah is one of my favourite people online. We have known each other for about three years now through Pom, Pom Mag's forum. Um, I think we were both knitting the Corona sweater together at the same time and this is how we kind of got to um, online know each other and then we started following each other on Instagram and we then I think Leah started her podcast and um, just as she'd started her podcast because I'd been thinking for a few weeks about doing one myself when I saw that she'd done a podcast I got really excited and it kind of inspired me to just go and do it so so it was really nice to meet Leah um, so that was dead exciting and then I also met up with obviously Amy and lovely Nikki who were selling Stranded Dye Works and I also got to jump out on 
Nikki of Team Possibilities and Katie of Inside 23. So that was really lovely to meet you guys. And obviously I got to meet my pom-pom friends, um, the girls who, well, produce Pom Pom Magazine. So like Lydia, Amy, Sophie and Megan. I've never met Megan before because she's from America. So that was really sweet. I finally got to meet, meet her and she was really lovely. I also got to meet Francesca who I'd never met before. Um, so that was really fun too and she is adorable and lovely. I then um, saw as well um, Natalie, I think her name's Natalie Sellies, Sales, Sellies, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, uh, Lily T and she is the sweetest person and I managed to get to see her again because I haven't seen her since a couple of years ago at Yarndale so that was really nice so it's like catching up with old friends and I managed to meet um, Marietti as well she's uh, from Rotterdam I believe and that was really nice because I met her last year at Yarndale that was super lovely uh, anyway I met loads of people this first day that I had not managed to meet. Um, ooh, Nathan of Twisted Finch uh, Yarns as well. I met Nathan and he is the sweetest. <laughs> um, anyway, so I've been wandering around. I did my uh, 12 till 2 uh, Ravelry meetup knit session uh, in the main room. There were speakers and talks going on in the back room. Uh, that was kind of darkened out with tables and seating areas for people who wanted to sit and knit um, and listen to the talks that were going on by the designers which was really great. Um, I watched the one with Bristol Ivy um, and it was really inspiring because it's some of it was things that I already do uh, like taking pictures of things that inspire you either colour or texture or pattern um, that might influence your knitting at some point and it was just really inspiring it was like where to pull those techniques and inspiration from so that was that was great um and then i i did do a little bit of shopping so i'll get into what i bought on the first day which wasn't a ton i didn't buy very much on the first day i bought the first stand as you went in was Pink Hazel Knits and Le Bien Enemy and I wanted a bag from Pink Hazel Knits because I, Pink Hazel bags, because I've been looking on her Instagram, Annette's Instagram for a while now, a little while after I saw that she was going to be there and was super excited when I got to her stand to see all of the bags at the side of her stand just hanging there and I was going to pick a a more of a sock size bag to start with just a an everyday style size bag but in fact I really like my big bags and I carry my big bags around with my sweaters in quite often but this one I can carry around with me as a bag itself really because it's that well sized so I saw this gorgeous number, isn't it beautiful? It's like really nice canvasy fabric, really beautiful made and a really nice size. And on the stand it was dressed, dressed, it was sat there hanging like this and I loved the cord. The cord straight away drew, drew me in and the flower print, it was just beautiful. And you guys know that I love pinks a lot. And I love the handle as well, really nice and sturdy. So I decided that this was the bag for me. And I also had another version that had a red band across instead of the beige canvas. But I think it was too much pink and I really liked this one. Um, and the bag is just amazingly sized 
so I love this lining, the red lining. It's beautiful and it's got a really nice side zipper pocket in there. I've just got two cakes at the bottom of here with a shawl in. But you can tell that there is tons of room in there. Technically I could fit I could fit a lot in. I will maybe put in some yarn in a bit and see if I how much skeins I can just squeeze in this bag, but I'm sure a sweater will definitely fit in there with much ease. Um so I've been using this kind of as a bag bag. I've been carrying it to work most of my week on my arm with my little satchel bag, which has been great because usually I carry I carry my project bags in my rucksack because they don't have handles so now I can take a smaller bag to work and just carry my project bag separately which has been marvellous. That bag cost me £44 which is really reasonably priced. When you think of a field bag, field bag is quite small, I'd say it was probably about this size um, and yeah they're really nice. Uh, but they're £60, which is quite a lot. And I really like these bags because they are highly well made and they're nicely thought out and they're beautiful. Beautiful. Annette has got some gorgeous fabric um, choices that she's done these bags in and all of them are different. So do check out Pink Hazel bags because they are fabulous. Like, I can't even... I can't even say how much, how amazing they are, like I'm sure you can see how amazing they are but I can't describe how much I absolutely love this. It is my favourite bag now, ever. I just, yeah. And I, it is worth every penny that I spent on it. And because I knew I was going to, going to be get getting one of these bags I made sure I had plenty of money for yarn and the bag so it wasn't it was just gonna happen the smaller bags I think were about 36 pounds um maybe 33 36 uh, I decided that I wanted the sweater size bag because for 44 pounds it being a little bit bigger it just made sense um so I love that and while I was on the stand talking to Annette and waiting to purchase my bag I had seen these on her Instagram stories possibly but she had some tape measures coming in for Pump Fest and <laughs> look at him, he's so cute <laughs> I couldn't help but get this little turtle I've been wanting a tape measure because I got a little bit overexcited with mine and I pulled it out and snapped it by accident because I, I didn't realise I'd gone too far at the pulling and it was it was an old one so I bought myself a new retractable tape measure with a little tortoise on it <laughs> I fell in love with him and you retract him with his little belly so I think he's dead cute so he was only five pounds so he was worth it because I didn't have a tape a retractable tape measure anymore and usually my long tape measures the cat attacks so Lincoln he loves them because they're dangly and uh, as soon as I get them out of the drawer he just sees it as a game to be full on and attack my tape measure anyway <laughs> then I I did have a long wander around and I didn't purchase anything until after I'd done my knit meet and greet thing in the afternoon I wasn't quite 100% sure what I'd made a whole list <laughs> so I was quite sure on what I wanted but I wasn't fully committed yet uh, I like to have a good look a few times before I fully uh, pick out my colours and things so I went to the Viola stand and it is owned by Emily Foden who creates this gorgeous yarn. Um, so I got the sock base, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 100 grams, and it's 421 meters. It's machine wash, delicate, life lapse dry. And this is the Muscari colorway. 
and it is gorgeous you can see some a lot of her yarns are like this where she has such slight subtle speckles in her yarn dotted in places like there's a don't know if you can see there there's some pink ones um but oh i just couldn't not and then there's some blue ones hidden around here somewhere but this it's like a lavendery periwinkle kind of kind of shade i couldn't not get it guys this is like my perfect color it's just too cute I'm trying to get a good that is a good representation of it really and trying to get a good light representation but it's very dark outside today it's been raining this morning um and And this again has, you can see some pink speckles and also some green, which I'd not noticed there. But that's going to be fab to knit up. <laughs> it's gorgeous and I can't wait. And I had plans for this. I wanted to, I bought the Tegna top um, pattern a while ago, about a month ago now, month or so. And I knew that when I was going to Pomfest, I wanted to get some Viola yarns for that because I knew that her yarns would be perfect. If you've seen the Tegna top, it's quite earthy um, summer top with lace across the bottom. And I was tempted to get earthy tones, but this just spoke to me straight away. I think you know when you've spotted your own colourway and this was it. So got two skeins for my size. And looking forward to knitting that and that is pretty much all I bought in the first day however the evening rolled along after Pomfest uh, actually finished I went and got a McDonald's <laughs> and then uh, me Amy Nikki uh, Terry of fine fish yarns and her friend your name is escaping me sorry uh, she was very lovely and Nathan all hung out together doing a bit of knitting having a natter we were quite tired um, and then the pom pom the pomcast live uh, started and the first thing was a bit of a prize well there was quite a lot of prizes being given out through the evening through the pomcast live um, from audience participation but the first one was where you we all had to stand up and we all had to honestly answer um, these questions and if you hadn't then you have to sit down and so it was like have you knit anything from Pom Pom magazine you know loads of people some people sat down do you watch uh, listen to the podcast some people didn't so they sat down are you subscribed you know and it got down to the, like the last question which is have you knitted from the take heart book and there was only three of us remaining and i was one of them so i was like really thrilled because i was expecting it to be another few questions i was that shocked at how many people just sat down i was like no way and i won a little sock project bag which is their new sprinkles a party pom pom party kind of project bag for the event and I won a skein of Norn I think it is yarn this is a singles and I don't have really many singles in my stash I've never really knit with singles either I think I've got like one maybe one or two skeins but I've never knit with them because they're they're precious <laughs> But that's all going to change. This is not just any ordinary singles yarn. Look at it. It is gorgeous. It is so soft. And this is a merino silk and yak blend. And oh my god. It is like... It is just stunning. <laughs> I've never felt yak before. I think I will be knitting with Yak again in the future because this is just dreamy 
and it's in a kind of a burgundy um, dusky pink which I love it's one of my favorite kind of colors I love burgundies and I love pink it is 65% superwash merino 20% silk and 15% yak it's 120 grams so this is actually a 480 meters um, skein so there's quite a lot there so it's definitely gonna go into a shawl at some point but it is stunning so thank you very much pom pom because oh, I couldn't believe that I'd won something I was dead excited because you know because I'm a child <laughs> so that was like the first day we had a uh, virgin mojitos while we were there we chilled out we gained a bit of energy back and then we went into the after the pomcast live we went back into the um into the kind of chill out room where we had a bellini cocktail and we kind of all chilled out and just chatted for the remaining hour or so before we headed back to our residentials then the following day came about and I spent the first part of the day minding the Katie Green stand so that was really nice which was a um, an auction for the um, My Body Back project which is um, Katie Green had donated all of her original illustrations from what she'd done for Pom Pom magazine over the past few years um, she donated those up for auction so that we could raise money for this charity which was um, for women who had um, gone through sexual violence so it was for supporting those those ladies so it was a very worthwhile uh, very worthwhile charity organization to be raising funds for um, in the end they raised about 900 pounds I believe so that is amazing um, so well done but I was minding that stand that morning and then um, and then I did my knitting um, Ravelry meetup but there wasn't as many people that just wanted to meet people that day it was more just groups of friends that had come up onto the settees to sit and knit and have their lunch so that was cool um, so I sat and knit and chatted to a few of them for a good hour or so and then I went for a wonder and picked up some of the rest of my yarn so I I bought <laughs> before the day kind of properly started I bought some skeins from the wool kitchen she had an amazing sample of this up as the Vara top from one of the summer issues of Pom Pom um, and it was a sport weight top but she'd done it in the four ply because it's not too far away in uh, gauge and it was stunning and I couldn't not get it because in my head before I left I kind of fancied knitting the bolter top which is by Gudrun, uh, Gudrun Johnson and I thought that this would then be perfect after seeing it knit up so this is the Mala, Malaka colourway I think that's how you pronounce it um, so this is 50-50 merino and silk and it's 400 meters and it's just like a lavender with hints of pink and gold when you see this knit up it is absolutely amazing um, and the the top that I'm going to be making required three skeins so that's what I picked up I've got three skeins of this loveliness and the top has like a lace section across the, the upper half it's a summer top and then a lace section across the back with an uh like a eye hole detail with a button and then it drapes down 
into like an A line kind of shape and has a scooped lower edge and it has like uh, increases in like waist increases so you can see the increases down the body and it's beautiful um, so because that was one of the projects on my list and I knew that I'd seen this I was like I'm gonna have to get that that is gonna be one of my projects because when I first saw it I was like oh I'm not sure what I could knit with that but I love it and then I intended on buying the Frenchie colorway for the Rockane sweater but that needed six gains so then when this top came to me I was like oh, that is perfect so I got that from the wool kitchen which is Helen I've mentioned Helen before with my Angelus Novus cardigan I love her yarns um, and I got a wool kitchen badge yay um, I also got a I might as well share it with you the pom pom enamel pin how cool is that it is so cute <laughs> and then that morning I was thinking about other sweaters that I could make um, and I was looking through my Ravelry kind of searching while I was at Costa's having my breakfast um, and I came across a sweater that was just released that was also by Caitlin Hunter who I'm going to knit the Tegna top and she's done a yoke sweater with a colour work yoke detail and a bit of a a sleeve band detail looks amazing so I'd seen two skeins on <laughs> on Amy's stand that were paint box one of a kind colorways that she'd done and I thought that I may have missed out on them and luckily enough when I went back to Amy's stand after I'd thought about this project, they were both still there. So I picked up two skeins of this gorgeous, it's like a peach colourway with high contrasty speckles of orange and pinks and brown and like a yellowy limey colour. It is just, it is just stunning. and I am super excited. So this is going to be for the main body colour. This is so cute. And then Amy's recently made her um, her soiree top out of this colourway and I got one skein of her shiner colourway also in a solo singles base. So that's going to be for the dark contrast detail along the top and then it also has two um, other colours in the yoke with the dark contrast colour and one of them was a really kind of washed out green and kind of washed out blue so I went for a really nice turquoisey green this isn't um, coming up very well on the video not too bad it's a bit more aquary but this is from la bien nma and i wanted to try this yarn because i've not knit with their yarns yet and this is on their merino singles in the vesper graffiti colorway and it's for uh, 366 meters to 100 gram which is pretty standard this project is like the perfect project to be able to scout around and find colours um, and be able to use a few different people's yarns but obviously of the same base type so that's what I plan to do so, so that's those so far there's a picture of these on my Instagram which has really good uh, colourway representation so if you want to see what they fully look like go and check out Kiltcraft uh, on Instagram and then I have got some of Terry's yarn before but I've not knit with it yet and 
I thought, ooh, Terry's stand is like the perfect stand to go to next to find another colour and I wanted a blue rather than an aqua. So I found this, which was perfect. So this is her narwhal colourway on a solo fingering, soul fingering, which is also 366 metres. Narwhal, how cute. I didn't even notice that was the name. I love narwhals. So that is also my other colour. Oh, isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> that is all that I purchased. Oh no, no it's not. <laughs> I, I took plenty of pennies. This was like Christmas for me. Um, if you get people buying you yarn for Christmas and it's actually yarn you want, you are lucky. However, I don't really get yarn gifts at Christmas. I sometimes get the occasional knitting book if I'm, if I'm lucky. So this was like Christmas for me. I bought my own Christmas presents early, guys. So <laughs> I then, Nathan shared these with us the night before. Um, Garthenor Organic Yarn. They sell little Shetland four ply mini skeins in 10 grams. They look like this. So cute. And when he said that they were only two pounds, how could I not? So I picked up a few of the colours. So I've got 10. £10 worth of the colours and I'm going to save these for some point to go into either something colour work or a shawl maybe because I like the idea of maybe doing a Stephen West style shawl at some point and that these could go in as a new texture to add in to a shawl so I'm saving those aside for something funky in the future and that is all that I bought <laughs> you're going to think that I'm a uh, proper yarn pig <laughs> um then it was really sad because we'd all spent two days together um nathan amy nikki and we all really enjoyed our time at pomfest it was an amazing weekend um i honestly didn't really want to leave <laughs> but as soon as it ended i had to say my goodbyes to the designers that i stayed with I got to meet all of them and they were wonderful and it is a memory that I will keep forever because I felt so lucky to have been able to spend time with them. Um, they, they were amazing ladies and so very kind. Um, and I said goodbye to my friends and it was hard because as soon as I said goodbye and I knew I had to go back to the B&B to get my bags ready to go to King's Cross to get my train which was due a few hours later I stepped out walked maybe 10 meters down the road and got choked up because I felt like I was gonna cry because I had had an amazing time and it is one that I can I can keep with me forever. Those memories are just so special. It was wonderful. I have met new friends. I have gained new friends on Instagram and those friends will be my friends for a long time to come and hopefully in the future I may meet them again. Uh, it was just the best experience and I felt very lucky. Uh, so thank you to everybody who who made Pomfest for me. All of you. It was awesome. <laughs> um, hopefully, hopefully I will meet you all again and can have a, a get together at some point. Um, until then though, I have now got plenty of yarn to knit. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. But I hope you enjoyed hearing about my Pomfest and enjoyed me sharing my yarn piggery 
um, from Pomfest because I know some people, I know plenty of you really like to know what I've bought and I know that plenty of you probably would have gone to Pomfest and spent plenty yourselves so I don't feel bad. I honestly don't feel guilty for all of this. I can't even see anymore. <laughs> I don't feel guilty guys. I don't feel the guilt. <laughs> Aha! <laughs> it's all mine. No, anyway. <laughs> I don't feel guilty. I went with things in mind. I bought them because I wanted to make things which I will enjoy making. Why should I feel bad? I earned that money. This is my true pleasure in life. And may can I say something? You only live once. You never gain that time back. So knit when you bloody can, enjoy it, and buy yarn if you bloody want to. Simple as. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to let you all go. Love you all, happy weekend, and I will see you soon for a regular podcast update. Bye!